Okay, thank you very much, Jack. Uh, Brandon, first of all, you're down on the very first play of the game. I mean, talk about being shell-shocked just to start the football game. So what was the reaction on the sideline? Well, I think it, we were kind of worried that we weren't ready to play. And uh, sometimes you can just sense those things. And all week I just didn't think we had to focus. And, you know, we tried to pry it out of them. I didn't do a good enough job as a head coach, obviously, of getting us ready to play. But you can only beg and plead and so much. So we got to be able to answer the bell. And they're, hey, they're a really good football team. We knew that coming in. Extremely talented. Uh, speed on the field comparatively. Uh, just, we just didn't match up very well, and we knew we were going to have to play a really good game to contain them, especially on defense. And unfortunately, I'm not sure we laid a finger on them in most of the first and second, third quarter. So, uh, and then we turned the ball over early, and you give up points on that, and we just didn't play very well. We had some nice drives, and then guys got to come out for this or that, uh, injuries, and you got to learn to finish drives. Uh, we did some nice things offensively, not enough. Um, they're the better football team. We knew they were explosive. We knew they were athletic. But, I mean, like you said, they could take it on any play, and they made big plays, and the Indiana kids weren't even around them. I mean, I think everybody was shell-shocked, weren't they? Well, it looked like it. I mean, they, they do a really good job of running their midline triple option, and, uh, you know, we kind of had a really good game plan. Coach Ward put together a really good game plan. We didn't execute it. Uh, we had guys assigned to the quarterback. We dove down on the dive guy, and the quarterback just ripped the B-gap for 60. And uh, it just was continuous. And then when we did do that, they hit the pitch and go 60. Our pitch guy didn't get there. So uh, everybody's got to be disciplined when you uh, face a def or an offense like that defensively, and, and we weren't. So whatever the reason that was, whether it's just athleticism or uh, we didn't come to play, we just got to keep getting better. And, you know, there's going to be days like this. You know, this is a 5A really good football team we're not there yet athletically uh, they were probably superior at every position we knew that coming in i think the thing that bothered me the most in the first half was our body language uh, we can't just hang our heads and put our hands on our hips and uh, mope around and find ways out of the football game you got to have a little toughness and uh, a little competitiveness to you and as we build this program hopefully that's one of the things that uh, we can accomplish is uh, no matter what the score, like I say every week, you, you're competing and you're not, uh, and you're playing the next play and you're not pouting, and that's something I got to correct. So that was what I was unhappy about. The score uh, is probably what it is. They're a really good football team. You challenged your team at halftime. We heard your comments with Doug when you came back on the field, and I hear your comments now after the game. You challenged your guys. You got three games to go, but as you said, you got a couple of winnable games and you can make the playoffs. So what do you kind of expect from your team now? Well, they got to. They want it. You know, it's not what you're capable of; it's what you're willing to do, and uh, it's up to them. I mean, how bad do they want to play football? How bad do they want to put themselves in a position to potentially make the playoffs? Because that is still out there. I mean, that's a reality. Um, as a staff, we're hungry for them to take that step, but it ultimately, it's 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 on them. Can we get better fast enough to win those football games? and have a willingness to prepare to win those football games, uh, we're going to find out in the next three weeks, but that's the goal. Jeremy Thomas was a bright spot tonight. He was really impressive, and you said some nice things to him, didn't you? Uh, Jeremy's a very special kid to me. Uh, you know, he joined us late, and, you know, we spent a lot of time together this summer. And uh, You know, not everybody has a, a, a great life, and, uh, and I love kids like that, and, uh, I thought he played his guts off. I mean, if you go back and watch every rep he played, he's blocking as hard as he can block. He's running as hard as he can run. And we need 11 guys like that. So I was really happy that they made that choice in the booth that Jeremy Thomas was uh, the Scott Zalma Award winner because he, he earned it. He deserved it. And uh, he, he's a special kid, and he needs his community to surround him with uh, love and support. And uh, he's going to be a great kid. But uh, we got to take interest in guys like that. And... Uh, I'm proud of that kid right now. Him. Well, he put on a great performance. Final thing you said to your team was, guys, I love you. And you told them to be smart this weekend because of homecoming, didn't you? Well, there's a lot of temptations out there for high school kids nowadays. And then you throw in a, you know, IUP right in your backyard with their homecoming. And, um, yeah, we want to make the right choices. We want those guys making the right choices and, and walking away from some of those things that could cause uh, 
things in their life to go the wrong way and say no to those things. And that's important to us to give that warning. And I hope they make those choices. But uh, I know it's tough being a teenager. And uh, we just hope they enjoy themselves. But be smart. Brandon, thank you very much. We'll see you next week at Blackhawk. All right. Thank you, guys. Jack?